having so much fun with this tiny little chunk of banana heart. Does that taste good? Some potassium, lots of water, some fiber. Yay, Toby. You're a good boy, Toby. Yes, you are. Bananas are cut down. I don't... Nope, hadn't started the video yet. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. There's a good amount of mist in the air, which is just fantastic. I love it. We've needed the moisture. It's like 73. Super humid. It's a beautiful day. And it actually, it even like sort of smells like spring out here. It's messing with my head. <laughs> he loves, loves that chunk of banana. He's been running around chewing on that for a while. I figure it's okay as long as it's not too much because there's a lot of fiber in there. So that could potentially be problematic, but it should be all right since it's just a little bit. As sad as it is to see them go, it looks so much better getting those cut down and having that space cleaned up. I filled up two barrels, the other one I already took out. This weather though, it's so nice out that the bananas, some of them are still like pushing out growth. They look terrible, particularly these over here. Like they're done. You can tell when you cut into them, they've well browned out by now because it's been a while since I cut them. Yeah, when I originally made the cut, the middle parts here were white on those. Let me see if I can find a fresher one. I can show you an example of the healthy tissue. I mean, I'm sure y'all know the difference between green and brown. Right now, now they've all started. Yeah, the banana pseudo stems, these trunks, just like a real banana. As soon as you rip those things open, you gotta act fast. So this was all white, and that's going to brown up now. Probably, you know, like this much of it will become kind of a gushy tip on there. It's sort of gross. But, anyways, the middles were still um, nice and green, which that's where the growth comes from, from the center. And they push out through there. Oh, I can probably show you over here. Yeah, see, the tip of this banana growth. Not so healthy, but there's still a nice firm leaf in there that, I mean, if it were going to stay nice outside, it would open up, but we're far past that. That's not going to open up. So it's good to get these cut off. Even though it's 73, 74 at this point, it's supposed to be like 18 in a couple days, I think, you know, because that's how the weather goes, just up and down and up and down. I figured if there's ever a good time to come outside and get those cut down, it would be now because it's not freezing cold outside. That in below 20, I like to make sure these are mulched. Really, they should be mulched around freezing, but the bajus are super hardy and this, there's a nice warm patch here, everything against the house. So these have kept going longer than I thought they would. It's been very windy, very, very windy. Yeah, uh, uh, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be in here. Come on, out. Good boy. Tornado last week. Thanks everybody for checking in, by the way. So kind of you. We're totally fine here. Was a little bit intimidating. You tend to get used to the tornadoes when you live in the Midwest and in the South and just, you know, the plains areas. It's something that's just part of life. You try and take it seriously. We tend to not get too concerned about it because, you know, it's just part of life. You can't freak out about it every single time. Just have to know what to do and be cautious. This particular tornado though, it was, it was heading right towards my house like a mile and a half no probably two and a half miles away and then it i guess it went back up into the sky and then went over to illinois and hit that warehouse Ugh, oh so sad and what's going on down in kentucky and everything oh it's so heartbreaking that was however one of the few times that there's a tornado warning and i was like uh <laughs> get my ass out of the basement gathered the pets got down there very quickly not that hard to get the dogs downstairs we do tornado drills the dogs and the birds, we do tornado drills. I've tried it with the cats, but you know, they're cats. What was the point? Oh, yeah, so it's nice out. So I thought I'd cut down the banana trees. It's also, it's really wet though. I mean, be careful what you ask for, right? I need to dig up these cannibals. I need to dig up these cannibals. I've been noticing when I edit the videos that I say, tuh, tuh. I think that's kind of a, maybe a Missouri thing. I'm not sure. Just that drawl or twang, whatever it is, but it drives me nuts when I hear it. So I'm trying to not, trying to not do that anymore. The cannons need to come up. Ground's all wet. Same thing with these alocasias. They're still nice and firm. Nice and firm in there. So they are okay. The uh, roses over here, I don't need to do anything with them, but I did want to point out, look at these beautiful rose hips. That's not something you see very often on a landscape rose. This nice, pretty red ones. These are the oh so easy Italian ice. And I absolutely love them. They're very pretty rose. Multicolor. I love that. They change colors. All kinds of fun, vibrant colors. Uh, but that's really neither here nor there. Just exciting to see rose hips on a landscape rose because, like I said, it's not all that common. At least none of the ones I've ever tried. It. This one right here, oh, it's going to be very full. Actually, maybe not. It looks like 
those might be about ready to dry off and fall out. Anyways, <laughs> like five, six minutes in. I don't really have any plans for the week. Just gonna do some yard work, water some plants, hang out, play around, taking it easy. Uh, oh, this is the, this, this isn't like just a for funsies thing. I'm not just like waving this around for the fun of the video. That's why I used to cut the bananas down. If you are growing bananas and uh, you don't have a machete, get a machete. It's gonna make life so much easier for you. Really, when it's time to cut down the bananas, you just go in, swift chop, boom, they're done. I do have a few feet more of trunk, maybe a foot more of trunk on these than I would normally leave. But I've just noticed over the last few years that when I leave them extra high, that they've been doing well. It used to be the thought I always had and what other people have always suggested, myself included, was that with the bananas, you want to uh, make sure that there's at least like six to uh, maybe 12 inches of mulch above the top, above that piece right there. I'm not gonna pile mulch all the way up there. I've done it before. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> it's not necessary. Not in zone 6A6B. That's not what baju bananas need, not here. But the idea behind that is the more pseudo stem that you preserve, then that's the better start the bananas are going to have in the spring. That's how much more growth they'll potentially have instead of having to start all the way from the ground. And the more trunk you preserve, pseudo stem, then the higher the likelihood of getting them to flower and fruit. And the bajus aren't edible. So, I mean, I guess they're edible. You could eat them, but that's not gonna taste good. They're like full of seeds and supposed to be kind of funky. So I don't really care if they like put out their inflorescence and fruit and everything, but it does look cool when they do that. So generally you want to make sure you can hold on to two to three feet of pseudo stem if you want to get that to happen. It's still kind of a luck of the draw. You need a long growing season and things have to work out just right. Mine have only fruited and flowered and fruited for me one time. It was the year of the solar eclipse, so I think that that probably had something to do with some kind of magician in the sky. And then the other time was just a crazy mild winter like really mild. So that was just a stroke of luck, I think. Anyways, I'll probably cut another foot off of the tops of those, but for now, this is fine. But uh, my whole point there, circling back, that thought that you wanna have six to 12 inches of mulch above where that cut is, so the mulch would have to be like right above there for those. That's to make sure that the entire thing is preserved for everything that I just mentioned. What I've experienced over the last few years, I've been like kind of leaving a lot of tips, sometimes even up and out of the mulch. And then it's just been crinkling and shrinking down to wherever that main growth, that dormant piece needs to be. And it's been fine. Like I haven't noticed an advantage to doing it that way. So I might just do it, just like leave those up top and shave them down and make sure there's some mulch on top of them, but not a ton because you already saw, this is how I started things. So I could eventually get to my point here. You already saw how quickly these start to brown up in the middle, right? So I can go ahead and make that cut right there. There's gonna be browning right there for several inches in there. They'll kind of brown and squish up and form sort of a, a really nasty cone, but the healthy growth will remain in the center as long as things stay nice and toasty inside that mulch pile. So that's what's going on with the bananas. I'm not gonna mulch them today because it's plenty toasty outside. I don't think it's necessary, but in a few days, whenever that cold front moves through, I'll make sure that these have at least a couple feet of mulch on them. Doesn't it look so much better having those cut down though? It's like a whole new view of the garden. Not that things are looking beautiful right now. <laughs> I still need to get in and trim up all the gingers and those things. These stupid pool equipment. I hate looking at the pool equipment. I have to find a better place to keep that stuff. What you looking at? Yep, so there's that. We'll catch up and move on to the next thing. Oh, the cannas. That's the last thing I need to do. I need to get those cannas up, but they're still so muddy. And it's supposed to be like 55 or 60 tomorrow. I might just give those a day to dry because I just, ugh. It's gonna be so gross, I don't feel like getting wet. I nor normally don't care about stuff like that. Getting dirty is sort of part of gardening, right? But I just took a shower. Eh, you know how it is, so sometimes you're just not in the mood to get really gross. That's gonna be a really gross project. Well, the sky's really pretty. They didn't say anything about more severe storms. I think we're good. Oh, that looks funny. Little poodle poof ball sticking up off the arbor vitae back there. What do we think? Time for this to go, right? It's not looking too good. <laughs> Come on, Toby, you can go inside. Go on. Go on. Good boy. The dianthus is still, this is stupid. If I'm gonna take it down, it would make more sense to actually show it to you when it's down on the ground and not right now. I should be using a step ladder. This is dangerous. I'm not doing this on camera. So windy. <laughs> As I was saying, you see the dianthus in there. Dianthus usually will stay green for me throughout a lot of the winter and do a little show in the springtime. The problem though with Dianthus is that, I don't know, it kind of sucks. 
Would you like me to be more descriptive than that? Maybe some productive description there? Well, I shouldn't say that it sucks. It smells wonderful and it's really pretty, but it just, you know, it does its thing. Flowers in the springtime. This is one from Proven Winners and it's supposed to put on another show in the summer, but it's too hot here. Really didn't do that for me. I don't know if the heat has anything to do with it though, because there are people who have really hot put. Ah, uh, that's not for you, stop it. It will potentially put on another bout of blooms, another show <laughs> during the summertime. Uh, this one did, it had a few, but wasn't really anything significant. So, I don't know. I don't really know what to do with this. For right now, it can stay right there because I have something I need to do. Get back to that in a little bit. Or never, might just sit through all winter. We'll see. This was a chandelier that, actually I think it goes like this, maybe. Well anyways, that hung in that hanging basket during the springtime, it was so pretty. It was just sparkled in the lights at nighttime. And then, I don't know, it fell down. It was pretty cheap, so I'm not too surprised by that. Lincoln, isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty, Blinken? You like the sparkles? Yeah, okay. Not for you. I get it. I am so sorry, dogs. You guys came inside. This is why you're harassing me. Because you didn't get your treat. Good boy. You came inside. Always need a reward for coming inside. You want one too, Toby? I'm so sorry. I forgot to give you your treat. You think you should get something too, Charlie? Yeah, he's learned. The dogs come in, they get treats, and then sometimes he gets treats too. But he has diabetes. Sort of. He had diabetes and then it went away. But I try and take these other treats with him. <laughs> what are you doing? He wanted to come out here so bad. I thought he needed to go potty, but apparently not. You just want to come outside and play? Wow, you're way too close. You're way too close. Hi, baby. He just wants love. He just wants love. Yeah, good boy, Turbo. It's the next day. Oh, the sun. I can't see anything. It got really, really crazy windy yesterday. I just... Had to call it quits. It was too much. Wasn't going to be able to film anything. Nobody would have been able to hear anything. I am. I'm going to have to do something with this, which is fine. I'm not going to leave that there all winter. That was a joke when I said that before. I think that I have just had to accept that the weather is probably not going to dry out, which is a good because we need rain. So I'll get in here and start cleaning some things up. Cut back the gingers and get these beds looking. I'm not going to say they're going to look great, but... An improvement. That's not fun to look at. Also, I just noticed that there's a colander, a tripod, and a shovel sitting over here. What the hell happened over here? I don't remember doing this. Maybe it was wind? I don't know. It's my rock rinsing colander that I use this for, uh, like, the, the fish tanks. I had those glass stones in there that I put into the big vase that I filled with things for the Christmas decorating. The shovel, well, that was just leaning against the house. I suppose and that was probably wind because I had the tripod sitting right around here at one point so that I could film some things I was doing. Wow, it's really, really gross. But now you wanna go inside? I think he just really loves going in and out of the house. I think that that's all that that is. He loves his airplane. I got him an airplane. I was at the airport last week. He loves that thing. <laughs> just go flat every time you want something. I think you're just sleepy. You're just a sleepy baby, aren't you? Sorry, the TV's kind of loud. Time to get out the good one. Maybe be able to hear a little bit better. I don't know. How's the audio working so far? Hopefully it's been okay. Oh, these weed vines all over the place. Those things have been a thorn in my side for the last few years. This year they were a little bit better than in years past, but still, they just grow everywhere. They take over. Let's see. Hopefully these aren't too mushy. No, they're not bad. Always ideal you can get to these before they get to be gross. Never fun cutting the stuff out when it's all gooey and sticky and nasty. That vine wrapped up around everything. We'll get the top of the fern while I'm at it. <laughs> I don't even know if that's in frame. May not even know what I'm talking about. There we go. That is much better. I 
kind of rushing through this because I just realized that they haven't come to get the yard waste yet, so I might be able to get another bin out there before they get here. Now, with some things, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and leave them. It's good for the soil, but with things like the leftover pieces of fern, the dead fronds, I don't really like to leave these because in the springtime when I pull the mulch back off of the gingers, you just have these stringy bits that don't break down by the time that mulch is being pulled back. They get tangled up in the rake, makes a mess. I add compost and all kinds of stuff into the soil, so it's not really necessary to hold on to those and try and get them into the soil. Ginger smells so good, but it is so cold. 30 degrees cooler right now than it was yesterday. It's 45, which normally in December, I'd be like, oh, that's a beautiful day. But when it was 75 degrees yesterday, now I'm like, oh, 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 oh this is freezing. Oh, I was holding this being like, oh, I didn't mean to rip this ginger up. That's not a ginger. This is a piece of one of those bikini teeny colocasias, and it is, that is squishy and done. No need to hold on to that. When I cut back the gingers, generally I just leave like a four to six inch nub above the ground. And that's just so I have some kind of reference for where I need to be making my cuts. Hey, Turbo, what is that? Bring it here. Come here. Uh, he just had this in his mouth, which isn't in focus. Did you come to work today, camera? What the heck? Where did he get that? Oh. Toby probably dug them up because the cage, I noticed the cage was open. He and his cousin were over here the other night playing and I think that they broke into there. Huh, well that's not great. Daffodils and alliums, neither of them are good for dogs. So keep that in mind if you plant them. That's why this cage was there, but didn't do its purpose. Anyways, yeah, just a nub, that's it. I'll get some mulch put on there. It don't, doesn't need to be done right now. The ground's still plenty warm. The gingers will be fine. Okay, <laughs> this is, this is gonna take a little bit longer. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be cut and cleaned up in here. I would, oh, there's a giant freaking red mite running right across my lens. Is that visible? This, can you, oh, all right, got it. Hopefully didn't leave too much of a smudge. I think that'll be nice. Getting this cleaned up so you can see the sable palms and everything that's in there and the passion vine that I talked about in last week's vlog where I was like, oh no, I left it out and I think it's dying. Well, that's still back there. So we need to get that out. Need to unearth the things and get this looking nice again. All the dead winter stuff. So tired of looking at it. We'll just do a before and after because the ground's too wet for me to really get my tripod in there and it's messy and it's cold. And if I leave the tripod here, it's just gonna be a lot of shots in my butt. That's better. Okay, hold on. It's not done yet. Eh? Better? Yes. I almost forgot. Needed to rush and get all those clippings up to the driveway before those yard waste people showed up. Right when I hit record to start that last clip, I heard a truck in the background. I was like, oh no, no. Didn't do all this to have all that stuff sitting around for another week. So I got it all out there. Lots of stuff to be picked up this week. Doesn't this look better? So much more nice and tight and tight, tidy-ish, kinda. More opened and decluttered. Not quite pristine, but you know, I'm not aiming for perfection here. Just trying to get the stuff done. The main thing I've noticed is how much this bowl here is tilted. How did that happen? Probably the dogs. Probably Turbo and his cousin Louie romping around and messing things up. There was, oh, that's why. Okay, there was a reason I had left that pile there, forgot about it. So uh, the gingers, some of them along this wall pulled right up. When the grows on these start to get that mush like I was talking about, if you get them nice and tight and then go in with your clippers, and you can make those snips much easier when you have some tension there. So I was gently pulling those so I could get in and make those cuts and they were pulling right up and out of the rhizome. That's not good, that's bad. We don't want that to happen. Because when that happens with our rhizomes, is this weird that I'm saying we and our, I'm talking about just gardeners in general, and they pull up like that, that can be indicative of rot. But the pieces that were coming up were nice and white. There was no odor or anything of the sort, and it was just on the ones over here by the house. This is a pretty warm spot in the garden. So uh, I hadn't even considered this being an area where I would need to jump on top of protecting the plants right away. We have had some pretty cold temperatures, but it's also been pretty warm. That in and of itself could actually be the problem. Freezing and thawing, freezing and thawing, when that's happening, like just 
up and down and up and down all over the place, that can be one of the things that leads to rot. It encourages the growth of bacteria, and when the bacteria starts growing, all sorts of other things start going on once fungus and whatnot. So I'm going to poke around the garage. I should have some fungicide to just pour into that area, just in the general vicinity. Yep, fresh out of fungicide, but that's okay. I ordered some and it can be poured right through the mulch. It'll be okay. Even though I don't need to rush to get the mulch on top of most of these gingers here, there is one over here that I've never overwintered before. It's, you can't really see it. It's just nubs right now. The Hedicium gardenerium. It's getting a full bag. Actually, might get two. Maybe I should put another one over there. Eh, no, I need to make sure I have enough mulch for everybody else before I get too generous here. There will be more mulch in this entire area. With the Hedichiums, I usually make sure that there's at least eight inches of mulch above them, and that needs to span out at about a foot or so around the outside perimeter of that growth ball, that clump that they have in the ground. And that is a Hedichium gardenerium. Yes, Sean, he's the one who sent it to me. I'm pretty sure that's what that was. Haven't tried those here before. I was going to dig it up, but like I said, this spot tends to be so warm and protected that I don't know. I, I, I want to leave it in the ground. I want to find out how it does. So hope, hope, I guess we'll find out in the springtime. And who knows what this winter is going to be like. This fall has been ridiculous. Like I said, 75 yesterday, 45 today in the low of 21 Saturday night. It was going to be 18. Then they changed it to 21, which is great. It was also supposed to be on Monday and well, now it's Saturday. That's fine. Did manage to get the passion vine pulled up. That thing Whew, it was all over the place, which is great. It means it was happy and healthy. Originally, that was growing up this gutter here. And you could just kind of see it through that garden window during the summertime. We had a bad storm and it blew right off and I wasn't able to get back there and get it to stick back to the house. There are anchors you can use for siding, but I just, ugh, I don't know. The siding's only a couple years old. I don't want to put holes or anything in it. So right now it's just a giant passion vine ball. With the passion vines during the winter, I don't do much with them. I just put them in the cool side of the garage. They don't get much light. Just splash them with water like once a month. Really keeping them more on the dry side with cooler temperatures seems to be a lot easier. I've always had the best luck with keeping them that way. So I'll make sure to get that moved inside and then pruned up and I'll put some sorts of supports in that pot so it's not just a big ball. In theory, it being in a ball doesn't really matter because it's not likely to do much growing during the winter time. It's more just kind of hangs out, but uh, the, everything that's on the inside of that's going to die off. So may as well give it a prune and give it some support, right? So nice being able to see the scrub palms, the sable miners out in all their glory, not <laughs> covered by gigantic weed vines all over them. Did a good amount of growing this year. For their second year in the ground, I'm pretty pleased. Pretty priest. I'm very pleased with the amount of growth that they put. You get it. You see that? <laughs> Those little nubs coming out the middle there. That is why I haven't been rushing to cut the bananas back because, well, they're <laughs> still pushing out growth. So they're okay. That's not going to last much longer. And that's why, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, why I left these extra high <laughs> because the weather being up and down and up and down, they're still growing. So I don't want to make the cuts down too low and then have the good tissue being closer to the ground. Does that make sense? It's just, I wanted to provide some extra space there for dieback. Hmm, maybe, I don't, I don't know if I'm explaining that right. That makes sense in my head. I need to take the busy inside. One is getting scorched out here. The sun's a bit too intense this time of year for it, apparently. It's starting to dry up because until recently it's been very dry and these lows that are coming up, it went down to 19 degrees. Really surprised by that. Didn't know they were that cold hardy. I figured they were good to like 22, 25, somewhere in there for a brief period. It doesn't look great, but that's how it goes. And I push my plants. I push them so that we can talk about it and learn from it, see what they can handle. But more nights in the 20s, I don't think it needs to go through all that. And they're saying it might snow Friday night, maybe. It's like an 80% chance of a mix. No, cold and dry. Sure, but cold and wet, I don't think so. Not in a pot. Sometimes snow can insulate and protect the plants, but this, that's not the case here. That's not what's going on with this plant, so I need to get that moved inside. Turbo loves his seashells. Love this cart, so nifty. You know what? I think it's time for the tree fern to go inside too, because, well, I mean, look at it. It's not doing so hot. They can take some colds. It may have taken too much. I don't know. There's still some green 
and some firmness there in the middle. So that will also be getting some fungicide. Can you guys even see this? The sun, the lighting's terrible today. Although, you know, though, I say that all the time when I'm filming and then I put it up on my laptop and it's nowhere near as bad, but <laughs> maybe this will be the exception. I don't know. I have accepted things are not going to dry out. Like I said, that's a good thing. We need the moisture. It's a good thing, but not the best for digging up the plants, but it is what it is. So for the cannas here, since, eh, you know, maybe I'll go over here and try and get this alocasia up first, which normally those just pull up all on their own. I don't think that's going to be the case with this one. We will see. Really, camera? Seriously? The battery just died. It was at 46%. 46% to zero in 10 seconds? That's not right. I think it'd be a good idea to get under here with the shovel and just try and lift some of this out. Oh, this is... What happened here? That... What? Huh? Whew! That was much more difficult than usual. Normally they just lift right up. This had run its tuber. You see that? Look at that. Look at the size of that thing. That was all the way down into the ground and then I had to split it up because there was no way that was coming up in one piece. So I have a chunk here. I'll go ahead and let this dry up some over the next few days and then I usually just store these in like a lawn bag. That's it. Put them someplace dark, cool, and fairly dry during the winter time and replant them in the spring. I also come in with a knife and make a cut right around here. Get all that squishy stuff off of there. Okay, cannas. I'm hoping they're not going to be as difficult. I think I need a sharper shovel. I think part of the problem is this one's dulled out too much. Oh, that is much... Oh, I'm sorry I don't have shoes on. It's, it's fine. We all have feet. It's okay. Oh, that's nice. I managed to wrap drip line all around the spot. That was not smart. Not smart at all. Dang, I... I had forgotten that I planted these so deep. I probably need to be digging these up. These would probably be fine over the winter time. You just never know. It's like, despite having made sure to put the shovel about eight to 10 inches out from the clump, it's like I still cut a rhizome. Oh, it's a good looking one though. This will be okay. Got a little slice in it, but yeah, that's nice and healthy. Oh, that's so good. That's what I like to see here. Probably I need my whoppers for this to get through there. There we go. That worked out. Try and peel off any of the dead stuff. I think at least some dirt on. If it's a heavy clay, then I like to rinse that mostly off. But this stuff, that'll just dry off and actually probably help provide some moisture for this during the winter time. Look at that. Nice bulbous fat piece of rhizome. And another one. Nice big one. These really multiplied very well this year. I guess I didn't really talk about this. What I did here is I made sure to dig on the outside, gently went under and lifted from far below. That just helps loosen the roots. Then I generally just like to use my hands to get in here and get the chunks out, get those bits and pieces pulled up from underneath. It's just more control that way. Oh, hey, hey. look at that one. That is very nice. Nice, big, healthy clump. I'm gonna get lots and lots of growth out of this one next year. That's a beast. You can see this one right here. Hopefully you can see how that's a lot darker. This one has some rot in it. You could go ahead, let that dry out, put some sulfur powder on it, maybe even some cinnamon. To help dry up those bits because you want to get those cut off with a clean knife, not just rip them like I just did. I just did that so we can see that brown on the inside. Hopefully this is in focus and you can see what I'm talking about. So that's no good. I have enough, so I'm not even going to try and save that. <sighs> okay, there we go. Can you see that now? Better. Look at all these. Quite the bounty of banana cannas. All that from planting two rhizomes in the springtime. Or actually it was like early summer, I think. Some of them are looking better than others, like this one right here. Not looking too hot, and it's just like I said with the other one. I'm just gonna cut the bad stuff out, hold on to the good stuff. In fact, with this one, I think that, eh, I don't know. So, what I'm unsure, and what I'm going to be doing with these anyways, is I'll just set them out flat in the garage to dry for a few days. That'll make it easier to shake some of this soil off of them. And then I will put them single layer into either paper bags or cardboard boxes. I'll usually poke a few holes in them. 
and I stick them down in my basement in a dark spot that's nice and cool. My basement is very humid, so I don't worry about the vermiculite or any of that. They should be totally fine down there, just on their own. But before doing all of that, anything that appears to be rotten has to be culled from the herd. Don't want anything stored with them that might have pathogens, disease, decay. Anything that's going to attract nastiness, don't want that around. Sometimes it helps to give them a few days to dry off when they're moist like this, when you, they have that dampness on them, because that makes it easier to tell where the actual firm sparts, sparts. That makes it easier to tell where the actual firm parts are and the moist, mushy spots. If when these roots have started to dry off and they'll just kind of pull off on their own, I just leave them. When they get to that point, if there's still mush, then it's bad. Either toss it or separate it, treat it in some way. Like I said, um, sulfur powder works well to sprinkle over the top of the cinnamon powder does work well, but that really needs to be applied to wherever the rot is. And when storing something, you want to cut all the rot away. So the sulfur is more preventative. Whereas the cinnamon, that's just a desiccant. It'll dry out the rot, but really don't want the rot anywhere around the rest of them. Be cut out and tossed. Also, you can spray them down with the fungicide. That would be ideal. <laughs> Probably what I would do if, if I had any right now, then I would do that, but I don't. Could let them dry and when that comes in the mail, give them a spray and give them a few more days to set. We'll see, they're cannas. They typically overwinter in a box very easily. Shouldn't be any issues there. I got the other alocasia clump dug up. And it's going to be the same as the others. This one did a lot of multiplying this year. Put up three, yeah, three nice big growths on it. Pretty sturdy, firm and healthy, and that's the same, just like I said with the other one. I'll cut the green off after I give it a couple days to dry and store it someplace cool, dark, and dry. I don't store these for as long as I do the cannas, though. I should have mentioned that. I don't typically like to have these stored for more than, I'd say, four months at the max, and that's just been through personal experience. I've noticed that after about four to five months has passed, they start to dry up and you start to lose chunks of those corms of the tuber. That could just be my climate and how I do things. I don't know. Uh, generally with alocasias, they need to get to be a decent size before you can even store them like this. Anywho, these are several years old. They're nice, big, I mean, look at the original tuber back here. <laughs> See that? Quite large. That had a nice, big, tall plant on it. But timing wise, that does work out just fine because it's just January, February, March, April. By April, I either want to have them potted up or I can probably even move them outside and keep them protected from frost, but get them moving that way as long as the ground's warm enough. Generally, if I wait until mid-May when it's nice and toasty outside, we have some heat in March and April, but we also have cold. Like last year it snowed on, what was it, April 28th? Which isn't normal, but you just never know what's going to happen. If I wait until I know that's perfectly safe to move them outside, it's usually just too long for them. So that's what I do with those. I used to just keep them growing all winter long. I kept them in the grow space and they did really well. But the problem was when I moved them outdoors in the springtime, they would just throw this fit from being moved from the artificial lighting and the lower airflow to being outside after being inside in that different sort of environment. And uh, they just responded with flop, greenhouse flop, transplant shock, essentially, or greenhouse shock, just it's kind of the opposite. Usually it's when you move something in the house, this is when you take them out. There are ways to avoid that, hardening them off, but I mean, I'd done that kept them in the shade and they still did it. So essentially, oh, did you hear that? What a beautiful song. Um, hello, beautiful majestic creature with your gorgeous songs. Where are you? Well, that was nice. Another nice thing about the winter time, the songbirds, oh, they are absolutely everywhere. I think that was a cardinal, but I'm not sure. As I was saying, they tend to throw a fit when I keep them grown and then move them out, at least once they got to be a really large size. When they were smaller, it wasn't as big of a deal. But once they got to be like four or five feet tall, I'd move them outside and their leaves would just flop down and it would be essentially the same thing as just planting them from the tuber. You're starting all over. And I was like, well, if I'm going to go through all that, they're going to throw a hissy fit when I move them outside and lose all of their foliage, then I might as well store them somewhere other than the growth space. Because, you know, real estate's precious in there. So those will go down to the basement with the cannas and we'll see them again in the springtime. Whew. Glad to have that done. Got the dirty things over with. I enjoy getting dirty in the garden. It's nice. Yesterday I just cleaned the fish tank and the litter boxes and the bird cages and taken a shower and then I should have gone outside and done the yard work before taking a shower but I was just I couldn't take it. I had to take a shower. I just couldn't handle it. I felt so gross. It normally doesn't bother me because that's just part of plants and pets. You get dirty sometimes but yesterday I, don't know, I just wasn't feeling it. Hey baby. He's being naughty. Oh, I'm glad to have gotten some things done. 
It feels really good to have that area cleaned out. I don't know why. I don't see it that often this time of year, but it's just good knowing that it's done. I'll get those bananas mulched up later on tomorrow, I think. Tomorrow would probably be best. There's the basket. We'll see what happens with that. I'm just doing one last scan through here to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. It's 21 might be too cold for a few of the plants out here. And actually, I think we're good. Everything out here should be just fine. Oh, no, maybe not. The Shiflora. I don't know. It's been down to 19, but why keep pushing it? I'm going to take that inside. Otherwise, good. Feels good to have accomplished some things outside. I'm really excited for next week. So I'm going to be doing a lot of work in the grow space. Speaking of next week, I think the vlog will be out on Sunday instead of Saturday. So the 26th instead of the 25th. I feel weird releasing a video on Christmas. Then Does anybody care? I don't know. I overthink things, but it'll probably be out the 26th instead of the 25th. Thanks for hanging out. Y'all got fun plans for the holidays? I don't. My family, we're not doing Christmas until like... I think the 30th or the 31st. That's the only time everybody can get together. There's a very loud high-pitched beeping sound coming from something and I don't know what it is. Anyways, whatever y'all are doing, hope you enjoy it. Hope you're having a great time, a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi. Love talking to everybody. Like I said, what are your plans for the holidays? Hopefully having a good time. Just life in general. I know not everybody celebrates Christmas, so you know, you do you. But whatever you're doing, it's great for you. Oh, and I've forgotten item from the Tuesday video. Favorite things, that outdoor fan. I already, I put it, I just stuck it up in the attic so we can't show it. That should have been on the list. It's probably my number one out of everything. Might even come before the gorilla card. It's, it's a close contest between the two. I will try and find the details on that and link it down below in this video, if you're wondering about it. Depending on the temperatures, if it's going to drop below 20, then I might wrap some ropes around this thing and see if I can pull it down and wrap it up. Seems unlikely, but may as well try, right? All right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.